it to you for an answer. How much? Two five two zero cubic feet. Do you want to speak? I did. And uh, well, cubic feet is twelve times twelve times twelve. Yeah. Seventeen twenty-eight. And then I divided that into my own by thirty-two by forty-five by twenty-one, which gave me if I did my calculation break. Here's on the bridge, uh, 34, 560. 34, 560. No points in there? Uh, and, uh, let me see. 32. No, there wasn't, no. Okay, and no. That, that's in feet cubed, right? That, that was uh, the inches, then I changed it to cubic feet. Okay, so this is inches? Cubic yes. inches? Yes. Okay. Just didn't you want a cubic feet, right? Yeah. Which equals? 20 square feet? Uh, yes. Cubic feet. Cubic feet, yes. Okay. So, answer 17.5. You're headed in the right direction here. Um, the thing being is, number one, if you know what you're looking for, the number one thing is to always convert these to feet. Before you do any calculations, it gives you the least amount of error due to mathematical calculations or trying to do things. So, 32 feet, or 32 inches, I mean, divided by 12 equals 5 inches divided by 12 equals 3.75 3 feet and 21 inches divided by 12 equals 1.75 feet. So by doing your conversion right off the bat, you've just eliminated trying to know if it's 12 times 12 by 12 or just 12 by 12 or dividing automatically by 144. If you know what your answer is, if the question says, what is the volume in cubic feet? Change whatever they give you to feet as a number one, um, the number one thing to do. So now we have 2.67 times 3.75 and 1.75. Multiply all three of them together, what do we get? 17.521 or 17.522. 17 point, yeah, it's 17. 17 point, it's, it's different. You, know, you round it to one decimal place, is, a, is all you're going to do. So 17.5 is probably close enough. So this would be cubic feet. So you don't have to do a lot of calculation if you do this conversion right off the bat. It makes it that much shorter. Well, I did, uh, I did it first, then once come back to food. <laughs> exactly. But if you do this and you make a, a mathematical calculation doing this, then you make a mathematical calculation to convert it back after you have the answer. You've got two opportunities to make it. Well, you've got one, two, three, and then four calculations where you could go wrong. Here, you only have one calculation to do, and it either matches an answer or it doesn't match an answer. If it doesn't match an answer, I go back and just revisit that these numbers are correct, but you only have one thing to punch in and you are already there so if you convert this 
right off the bat, you've simplified what you're going to, and you cut out a lot of error, possibilities for error. Make sense? Yeah. Are you, are you yeah, I made a mistake on the way and I talked to Ace because when I just redid it with the yeah, 32 by 45 by 21, it did come out 70.5 by 3. Yeah. Yeah. But even if you're off, you already had an extra decimal place or whatever and it doesn't come out there, round it off to one place. Well, if they're giving you the answers in two places, round it to two. If they're giving you whatever the answers are, that's where how. We're only giving you a full uh, just 17, you know, unless they give you 18, then you round up. Uh, but there's your um, volume. Again, not trying to be tricky, but they're going to give you inches of one in cubic feet or give you cubic feet, one cubic inches, or something. There'll be something different. <clears throat> Find out what the answer is and convert to them right off the bat. It's 10 30, let's take a 10 minute break. <coughs> but we've got a few more left examples just to go over on this stuff. Like I say, we're only going to deal with um, area, volume, triangles, and that sort of stuff, hopefully. By doing that is there's a lot of people that get really upset with trying to do or understand the angle of what people are trying to, to do and how to interpret questions. So, okay, you have a right triangle. One side is 32 inches long, the other side is 14 inches long. What is the length of the third side? Now, the side you don't know happens to be the hypotenuse. And the question should give you that. It should tell you that part A is such and such, part B, so you know that you're looking for the hypotenuse because you could work that back from the 14 as a hypotenuse, but in this particular one, you're looking for the angle opposite to the right angle. Thirty-two and fourteen. Thirty-two and Are you close? Okay, what formula do we start with? It's a 
three, four, five. Yeah, but what is the formula for that? That's that's one of I think it was number five that we we're going to memorize or six. Yeah, it's about it's about us. So what's the formula? It's, uh, square root. It's square. You're right with the four. That's the triangle. Four, five, six. But there's a formula that we we're going to memorize for that. A squared equals to B squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C squared. Okay. Yeah. This is A. This is B. C is always a side across from the right angle. So A, 14, squared, thirty-two squared equals C squared. C squared but we don't know right now. So fourteen squared is. I just got that. One ninety-six. One ninety. 196 plus 32 squared is? 1024. Is what? 1024. That was Equals C squared. So if you add those two together. Square root of 20. I'm out of my head. A good 1,000. C squared, the square root of 1220 equals C, 24. 24.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 34.9, 
So, number one, what are we looking for right off the bat? Out of the five, out of the six formulas that we have written on the first page when we first started our test, what are we looking for? The area of the square footage of the area. Okay, we'll start off, we can start with area, that we do know. So what's the area of, we're looking at a square right now, right? We have a piece of place which is six, six foot by five foot eight inches. How do we do that? Multiply. What do I multiply? Six feet. Well, you can change it. You can change it to inches. It should be seventy-two inches by sixty-eight inches. Good. We gotta get these two the same. Number one, always think you can either change this to feet or that to inches. So, again, what's the third piece of information you get, and what in, what is that in? Just to make things easy, the third the third thing they're giving you is in is your thickness in inches. In inches, yes. And what they gave us for weight is 500 pounds per cubic foot. So our answer we're looking for is in. So, what do you think we should do with this? I changed it to mine, I changed it to inches, and then I changed it back to feet when I, when I was okay, done. Okay, so how do you eliminate I doing it twice? Four square feet. That was only the six. Doing, it, doing two, two things? Yeah, yes. Okay, we want to only do one. So what do we do to these numbers knowing that this is what we want? We got to figure. It, we got to figure that out in order to get our answer. What do we want to make these? Right. So we got the first one. Perfect. It's already there. Five foot eight inches is how many feet? We have eight inches out of twelve. So if I want a fraction, what is 8 divided by 12? Point six six. I'll just say 6, it's a third, right? So I'm just going to put down 0 0.66 times 1 and a quarter. So I have 1.250 divided by 12. And that gives me... Someone's going to tell me, because that's a point. <laughs> I don't have a calculator. So it should be <coughs> less than a ten. It's going to be point that is. Point something. And zero points. One, zero, four. So zero point one zero four? Yeah. So now these are all feet. They're all converted to feet. Knowing we want to go to cubic feet, you know, that's probably the easiest one that will make us do the least amount of math, the least chance of getting an error in our math. So go back to our formula. We want area, so we need the length and the width of the plate. So here we want 6 by 5.66. Our area equals. Thirty-three point nine six. Thirty-three point nine six. Okay. Now, what's the next formula that we have to know? Because we figured out area. Yeah, but we haven't got to here yet. But what is what is cubic? It's got cubes is three. If we were looking for a square something, there's only two, we only multiply two, we're looking for cubic, so we need volume, so how do you, what's the formula for volume? 
Remember we did area, volume. Our formula for volume is the area times the, no thickness. Well, but length, yes. Any whatever the third dimension is. It could be in this particular case it's going to be thickness because it's only one and a quarter inch thick. So whatever that dimension is going to be, which I already read today, this time here we're going to say thickness. So we know so our volume equals 33.96 times 0 0.104 because again feet this is in feet we want to keep it all in feet equals three point five three three point five three yeah one eight four well, a couple is good. So we got three by five, and this is now cubic feet. So now we've got this answer here of cubic feet, which is 3.53 three and we know that for every cubic foot, it weighs 500 pounds. So we take cubic feet times, and what do we get? 1765. 17.65. Oh, I put the point there. It's not 1765 pounds. Now, the thing about this is answers will be given. Probably it says approximate, so they're looking for um, you know a certain amount of weight. The answer is going to be going. Whatever you run, take this to the nearest to the nearest one. So that, that might be 1,800 pounds. Whatever they give you that's close to this, because the, the question said approximately. So I don't know how many decimal places they're going to. And you know that when you order something, you always order a little more because there's going to be some scrap. So if you need to make this thing, or you're ordering that and you know the weight, your weight's going to be a little bit, because they're saying it's 500, they probably round this off, because that's not going to be, it's not going to weigh 500 pounds, they're just the information they're giving you. So find the answer closest to that. Um, So does that make sense? Again, converting it, look at what you're looking for, convert it to that one so that you have the least amount of mathematics that you have to do. Least bit of calculator work. So it's the formulas make sense. We yeah. looked after the area, then we went to volume, knowing that's those six that we did. Now, when you write them out, you can put on this paper before you even start to write, when you get the volume, you can put length times width times height or length times width times thickness or however you want to put it down. But know that it's area times that third dimension. Okay. What is the maximum load in pounds that can be moved with 1,500 PSI hydraulic force on a 3-inch diameter bore cylinder? So our information is... system and our cylinder 
is a three inch diameter. So we're using that, what's the maximum weight of the, say, we'll say this is a, uh, a hydraulic lift in a, in a shop and we're going to pick a car up with it. What's the heaviest car that we can pick up with this? Our system supplies us 1500 PSI. We know we've got a three inch diameter cylinder that's going to pick the car up. How heavy of a truck can we pick up or a car or whatever with this information? Any idea how you want to tackle it? Might be, it would make sense more when we go over the hydraulic one. Yeah, I have more information. This is all you need. Is it? Yeah, that's all they'll probably give you. But it might be, uh, it might be better off to wait till we go through the hydraulic because this is when we get into that type of thing. But just for, um, cylinder. Again, you look for the area of that cylinder, which is uh, pi r squared. ID is the circumference. Oh, the we don't want the circumference, we want the area. So we have pi r d, 3.1416 times the uh, radius, which will be 1.5 times 1.5, whatever that is. But that's a radius. So you square the radius. Half of three inches. This is three inch. So the radius is cut in half, which would be uh, 1.5 is a radius. So you square that, multiply by 3.1416, which would give you whatever. 7.068. Is it? Yeah. Six or eight or? Yeah, it's uh, 7.068 or 6 times because it's 707. Okay, so we get that, and we know we got 1,500 pounds. So this 1,500 pounds is going to be pushing on seven square inches. So we know that's area, which is square, it's only multiplied to the two things. So now we get this times 1,500 pounds. So again, we have a ratio. It's pushing on a seven inch piece instead of a one inch piece. If it was a one inch piece, you'd be able to pick up 1,500 pounds. Now you've got a seven inch uh, square inches to move it. So you can pick up multiply that out, it should come to Thousand six hundred five. Yeah. So you'd probably get an answer of ten thousand six. That's a little unfair for calculations because, it, like I said, I just took a bunch of. We haven't even got to that part yet. But again, thinking about the, the formulas we've done, that was one of our formulas that that we did. That's really the only one with pi. Remember what pi was? So two of them six things we're using here value for pi and the formula for area of a circle. The rest of them we'll do in chapters coming up. I, I should have stopped before I did that one because um, that's we haven't really covered this yet. So I should have stopped the one before, <laughs> before before that. But anyway, once I wrote it down, I figured I might as well just go through it. This is going to be sort of a repeat when we get to that particular chapter.
So we've done calculations based on just those formulas that we covered this morning. Now we're going to do probably five or six more chapters that will have calculations in hydraulics, pneumatics, gears, belt speeds, gear ratios, chain falls, all that sort of stuff. We're going to be doing more calculations, electrical, uh, all those ones will have calculations. But they're all going to use the formulas that we've got to this point. We aren't going to have any other calculation or any other formulas that we're going to do. When we get to electrical and I think hydraulics, I'll have to remember a triangle. And that will be just, and that will be the last, I think that's the last two things we have to remember. So. So, any questions on calculations before we move on? Is it a help or is it worse doing and taking you down this path? Well, I wonder, is that a, maybe a pool of questions we can have? Uh, maybe we won't get to What's that? A pool of questions. Do we have kind of well, when we finish all the calc, like when we go through all the chapters where there's calculations, yeah. you'll you'll have all like all the ones we practice on. Okay. You actually have the, all the questions are just taken out of the, the handout I gave you yesterday. There's a big stack of them like that. Okay. They're all taken out of that. There's nothing like you already have them. Okay. To, like uh, I'm trying to remember which part of those chapters, but every one of the things that I just asked you yeah. is in that those questions. So the ones I have circled, as you go through them, you'll get everything that I've already <coughs> talked to you about. But it will be like the calculation when we get to hydraulics will be in chapter 12. Uh, I think my, my problem is the conversion. So back on my we use metric system. So the conversion from foot to inch and all those things. So that they, yeah, I'm having a little challenge. But well, you're I'll, used, you're I'll, used to I'll, changing a decimal place, just moving a yeah, decimal yeah, place around. Yeah. This is going to be different for you. Yeah, it will be a challenge. I know. I'll try. I'll try to get this. To you are going to have to take a, a couple more steps. Like remember, there's 12 inches in a foot. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to to, to know yeah, that yeah. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of feet and inch calculations. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's much in line of yards to feet or anything like that, but there is. A lot of calculations from feet to inches or inches to feet. Because they will give you, like the one we just did that had six feet, five foot eight inches, where you have feet and inches, and then one and a quarter inches, all different ways of having to change things. Uh, it would be a tendency right off the bat when you see five feet eight inches to multiply by 5.8. Just in your mind, when they say five foot eight inches, when you start putting numbers in there, six feet and 5.8. Well, 5.8 is not five feet eight inches. So you have to be, look at the number and then say, how do I do it? Just like I said, take your time, read the question twice, and make sure it's not 5.8, and you have to take just the eight inches. You don't take the five part, you just take the eight inches and divide it by 12 to get the fraction on the eight. Then when you come to inches, you have to change the quarter into a decimal. And then you have to take that and put it over 12 to get, to get that converted feet, which is going to be less than one foot. Anything less than 12 inches is going to be point something. So you will, that's going to be a challenge for you to get to that point where you know change the feet and feet there are 12. Yeah, it, it, it will come. Yeah. It, it, it will come. So, so rigging. There's a few things that this doesn't cover, but there. Uh, I'll go over or some additional things that we'll um, add on. So here we're going to worry about uh, load calculations and. To pick things up and, and that sort of stuff. 
So some of the calculation questions will be here. It won't be anything different. If I don't see that it's worthwhile doing a bunch of calculations, I'll wait for a day or two and then do another bunch together. Symmetrical loads. When you, one thing that used to amaze me about the riggers is they could come and look at something and it didn't matter what it looked like. They could pick it up here or over here or over here. They just look at that and they'd know the pump was heavier than the motor or whatever. And they would almost be able to just go put a sling on it, pick it up, and the center of gravity was what they were actually picking up. To me, I was thinking, wonder how they do that. And it comes with experience and a bunch of other things. But when you pick something up, a lot of times when you get a motor, you'll have an eyeball placing the top of it, and that will be over the center of gravity. So you can grab onto this, it's already done. The manufacturer has done it for you. Same as in some weights and that sort of thing. Once you assemble them in the field, this is never going to be exactly in the center anymore. So this will weigh more than this will weigh. So the center of gravity is right here. So when you pick this up, you have to pick it up over the center of gravity. Because if I pick it up here, what's going to happen? Down she goes, she'll fall off. Very unsafe. If you don't know what you're doing when you're rigging, it's very unsafe for anybody that's working around you. So, number one, load must be directly over the center of gravity. So here you can see you've picked it up and you've picked it up over the center and it's straight. If you pick it up in the wrong place, it's just going to go poof. So you can't just put this on because nothing here, there's nothing there to stop that from from taking it. Once it starts to go, this is coming off of whatever you're holding up, and whoever's down here is in grave danger. So, you pick it up and you use two straps. You don't even use an endless strap. You put two straps because you don't want them. Now you've got all the stress on this leg here because it's, and this one here doesn't have as much, or this breaks because you haven't calculated the safe working load on this particular strap. Again, down have an issue. So a couple things we we have in this particular one. Uh, you want to take a lift that has to be over the center of gravity. On here you can see that the length of this is different than the length of that. Do you th what do you think? Is there a difference between what this is carrying and that's carrying, are they different or the same? They are the same. They are the same. This is supporting half the load, this is supporting half the load. So it doesn't make any difference how long they are. If it's over the center of gravity, the weight that's on this triangle will have, it's supporting half the weight, and in this particular one, this is supporting half the weight because you're over the center of gravity. So if it's slinged up and it's over the center of gravity, it doesn't make any difference how long the wire ropes are. They will have equal weight or equal load on them. So again, remember that. Just remember these pictures. What would happen to here is stress one over the center of gravity, doesn't matter. And if you're picking something up, here's a better way to do it instead of having it because this can actually slip right through that. So. That picture is in your book if you wanted to put X beside it. Just, I think I always like remembering pictures rather than uh, remembering anything else. So if you go through that, you will see that picture in your book. And you put an X beside it and, and the explanation is there. And just to remember, you have to pick it up under the center of gravity. If you 
don't, you have unequal, if you don't have it over the center of gravity, you'll have unequal uh, loads on the, the uh, wire ropes, and it will shift if you're not over, and you have a, just a single strap, so you're having an eye equal to distribute it, and they can be different lanes and still have equal load on them. So there's three things to remember off of that slide. Again, not only do you have to be uh, over the center of gravity, or, not, or in the, not in the middle of the load, but you have to be over top of it. Here's a case right here. Somebody's put a, uh, looks like a drill press, and they put it on a pallet, and someone's going to try to lift it with this little tiny sling. Well, when you lift this up, what do you think that's going to happen? Because the center of gravity is higher than your lifting point. It's going to go. So you have to be above it. See where the little black and white arrow is? That's where your center of gravity is. This hook has got to be up above the center of gravity. So this would be correct. Balance low. This would be incorrect way of picking them up. Make sense? So again, we have, this is the kind of table you would look up if you had certain size um, diameter of a piece of pipe or a piece of solid stock, round stock, and it will give you the weights per length or whatever. So there's lots of measurements in there, and you're not expected to know that, but if they ask you for a weight, like the calculation we did and looking for a weight, they will give you that information. So like 500 pounds per cubic foot of steel or whatever give you that information but that is also available on tables and it's going to be cubic it will either be in square feet if they're going two dimensions or being cubic feet if they're looking for volume so remember square is always area cubic is always volume so again you have a very similar type one here where you may be asked to how much materials it going to take to build this tank. So you know all these square feet, you know four foot eight inches, five foot eleven inches. You know when you're going to fabricate this that there's going to be a little bit of waste. So for a rough calculation of how much material you have to have, you can round this off to five, you can round this off to six, and you, know, you can do your calculations and you know what you're going to, to need. But in the calculation, you have to go along with what they give you, the value they give you. That's when you are doing the calculation. Yep. You go with the value that has been given. But in the practical sense, you want to go a little bit above the value. <coughs> well, everybody will tell you a little different what their rule of thumb is. When you order stuff and you know you're going to make this tank, there's going to be waste, there's going to be scrap. Some will say add 10%. Some will say, so the thing here is they're saying, if you had a question like this, yeah. or if you were in the field and doing that, you'd round this up because you know you're going to have probably a few inches off of each sheet that's going to be to round that and then round this up. Yeah. And then it's a lot easier calculation. Because here, this is your diameter. So if you're going to use a formula, going to be using this and we're going to be using the formula for circumference. what Circum circumference circumference yep. circumference you're going to be using the formula for circumference and that's going to give you your that and then you have to add the side up right you're going to multiply once you know how long and how the outside dimension is you're going to multiply it by this number to, to figure out how much material you need. What else do you have to do to this? You're right, you're, you're absolutely right so far, so you're correct. But what else do you think you need to do here? What other formula would you use? I know you want to say something. Um, I think you will use uh, the 
nine times uh, a week. Well, you, get, you use this, okay. but this is a tank, right? Yeah. And it's uncovered, so this is open. What's down here? It's covered. Exactly, you have to put bottom in the tank. Yeah. So when it's asking you how much material you're going to take, don't forget the bottom of the tank. So you have to now use the formula for area. So think of this as being the bottom, because we're looking, but this gray area in here, yeah. you have to take that, because you have to buy that material too. Because yeah. if you just buy the material for the outside, when you go to put something in here, it's gonna come out the bottom. So it's gonna make a piece of pipe. Here we want to make a tank, and it says uncovered, so we don't need a top. But if it said an enclosed tank, you have to take that area and multiply it by two. So again, when you go through it, read the information. In a position like this here where there's a tank, you would now use this to figure out how much area you need to that fabrication for the bottom. You only need a one sole because it's only the bottom. I guess you'd actually have to assume that the thickness of that cover or that bottom is the same as the walls do, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd have to put, put that in there as well. If right? it doesn't say that the bottom is whatever, then you just use it. You're making the whole thing out of quarter inch. <coughs> Excuse me. So you just take your five feet, your area is. Pi, so eight point one four one six times two and a half squared. So your radius squared. Yeah. Then that will give you the area, the time, and you only need it for the bottom. But if that said it was a covered tank, you'd have to multiply that by two if you need a top and a bottom. The same thing applies if it was a square tank. You don't just do the sides, you need the bottom. So main slings, we, we have wire rope, we have fiber rope, we're going to talk about chains and web types of uh, slings and then uh, round, round slings, uh, endless slings. So here in this particular section, this is very important because you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of questions coming out of, out of here. Again, we're looking at this one here. Um, these terminology is what you want to get from this. So there's um, clips and, and thimbles, hooks, eye bolts, shackles, uh, a master link, uh, a web sling where you have one piece will fit through it. Um, you got wedge socket. Now that one's going to be important, and we're going to talk more about these um, wedge sockets, and different things, and how do you mount them. And definitely, they're important. One important thing about this here: if you're using an eye bolt to do any lifting, make sure that that um, is actually seated down can't have this rise, we're going to talk more about that, but if any of the thread or any part of this is damaged in any way, shape, or form, throw it out. So if you ever hear or have questions asking you about damaged light bulb, like you send them to the shop and get them welded and fixed and whatever, you never, you, this is what something you're picking, supporting something or, or lifting a load with, you don't repair that. If it gets damaged, get rid of it. I never, I never ever put trust in them. Hey, I hate them eye bolts, especially you get a big 50 horsepower motor and it's got this little old 3 d 38 yeah. It's supposed to be designed to do that and that sometimes you don't want to stand under it anyway. No. But, or yeah. put your fingers under it when, when it's being moved or located Some people said, Steve, they like, don't put trust in it. A lot of times the manufacturers will use that. Just move the casing around the shop with the painting. So. I had to look at it, you think he's high brake, but I know it's for lifting, yeah, but they, 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 they say it's designed. If there is an eye bolt in a motor, it should take the total weight of the motor with a safety factor built in. Yeah. But if there's any reason that this has ever seen anything, again, yeah, make sure you, you don't use that. Throw it out. The other thing is this shackle. If 
you have to be lifting on this shackle, and you have a wire rope or something that's come over here, and on the lift, this thing, this can thread itself out. So in this particular case, you would want to have a safety pin, and a safety pin normally extrudes right through it, and there'll be a hole so you can put a cotter pin or something so it cannot back itself out. So if you have anything on here, you make sure you have a shackle with a safety pin. Um, the other one, you'll see them, they'll take some wire. If it doesn't extrude through, they'll take some wire, wrap it around here, and, and do it a few times and have that wire to stop it from threading itself out as a safety factor. Slings, there's different types of slings. You have a, a, a sling like this here, eye bolt. Could be a motor, could be whatever, and you're doing a straight vertical lift just off the eye bolt. Eye bolt, if it's in something when it arrives, it should be over the center of gravity and it should take the load. Choking something, where you take a strap, wrap it around here, choke it, it will stop it from moving back and forth. <coughs> Again, a straight lift. Then you have a, a U basket type, or U type lift, where you have two. Now this one, you can do twice the safe working load because you have two, you're lifting with two parts. Here, you have a basket, but it's coming up to only one. So your safe working load on this would be half of what that is. This has got two lifts, this has got one. This is either either or. This is twice as good as this one, or this is half as good as that one. However you want to look at it. <coughs> and then you have a bridle where you're supporting something coming up to a master link, can be chains, can be wire rope. And there's formulas for each of those. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we figure them out. So, another thing to remember when we're, we're lifting a load. Here you lift the load and it's straight up. And if you have one hook on that and you're lifting it up, the whole load is on this chain. I put two chains and I spread the weight out to, to, to make that um, a little more. These now are only going to take half the load. It's like here, this chain is supporting this and this is supporting that. I put three on it. This third leg takes no weight, zero. Each one of these chains or cables or whatever I put here must be capable of lifting half the load. So in this case, I have two legs and this is a thousand pounds. This chain, this wire rope has to have a safe working load of at least 500 pounds. I put three on and they all have to have be able to support at least half of the weight. The reason being is the third leg on here is only balancing the load. Why, why do you like that? Is it, are, are they all calculated to be at the center of gravity? Yep, you're lifting up. They're all equal. Yeah. They're all equal lengths. <clears throat> but when you pick it up and put the third leg on, third leg really doesn't do anything. It doesn't distribute the weight. All it does is balance it. <clears throat> so with that in mind, when you go from two to three, you can't change or, or, or use a sling or, or a wire rope or a chain with less capacity than this. You could have a chain here and I'm just going to throw some numbers out. Hopefully that'll make sense. To say, for a lift of a thousand pounds, I have to have a half inch chain. I put two on it, I only need three eighths of an inch chain. When I go to this one, I still need three eighths of an inch chain. 
when I go to this one, I can go to say a quarter inch chain. And the reason now I've got four, when you get four, three of them are supporting the load now. If I was to have another one here that had five chains on it, four of them would be supporting the load. One would be used by the balance. Exactly. So once you get the three, one's just sort of balancing the load, and you always eliminate that one. So from three going up, always reduce the safe working load by one. So if you had four, you can use you can divide the safe working load by three. If it had five, you can divide the safe working load by four. So you'd have five on each leg here and say 333 pounds on each leg over here. Exactly, yeah. So, and once you have that on the leg, the chain only has to be strong enough to lift that up. So <coughs> if, you, if you go and you don't have the half inch chain, you can't do a straight vertical lift. If you only have three eight inch chain, you have to put two legs on because you have to be able to support the load that you're picking up. Make sense? Yeah. Just remember that the third one becomes, after two, one of the legs is just for balancing, and onward all the way up, you're still only using one for balancing, so it, it comes out to always just reduce it by one once you pass three.